Hey everybody, how's it going? All right, back with just another kind of quick vlog here. Got a few things to talk about. Uh, first, I guess, uh, let's take a look at the room. Let's see where we're at here. So, made a lot of progress. Uh, I'll get out of the way here so you can kind of see what's going on. So, as you can see, I got the drum kit in here. It actually fits uh, in the room relatively comfortably. Uh, you know, it definitely cramps things, so I don't think that's going to be a permanent installation because... Um, uh, it's going to drive me nuts. I'm going to start feeling a little, little claustrophobic, you know. But as it, I spent the last week, like, kind of getting it tuned up and getting the kit pieces all situated and, you know, trying to kind of figure out what's comfortable for me and trying to get it to sound okay, which, yeah, that's no small feat for a guy that doesn't uh, have much experience tuning drums. Uh, you can see I got all the mics up and everything. Here in the last couple days, I've, uh, I've mic'd it up. And uh, actually... <laughs> You know, I've got a long way to go, but uh, I, I'm kind of happy with how far I've come, you know, since starting to try to mic a, a drum kit. I still have uh, a long way to go. Uh, just yesterday, I um, chatted with uh, some of the guys at the Recording Rebels, and they've been helping me uh, with some suggestions and, and things like that. So here, after I shoot this video, uh, I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to, you know, take into account, you know, the things that they suggested, and uh, hopefully I can get, you know, even better results. Of course, nobody can make me a better drummer other than uh, just me plus time. So hopefully I can get, you know, more practice in now that I got the kit set back up, you know, more opportunity to play. Uh, you can see back there, I got my amps uh, set up in here. That's been really great just to be able to finally play uh, through amplifiers again, <laughs> you know, out loud. Uh, I got all my guitars in here. You can kind of see them back there. And just in the last couple of days as well, here, I've got a i to flip this around so I can see. In the last couple of days as well, I uh, got my desk all set up. I uh, can't really quite see it all from here, but you know, same old desk, same old speakers, um, same old equipment and everything, but I got everything fully wired up uh, in the rack down here to where I can patch pretty much anything to anything, which is great. So I've been playing around with a few connectivity options that I didn't have um, before. So, um, you know, doing a little bit of research for that patch bay video really went a long way towards uh, just making kind of a uh, more functional and uh, quicker setup for me. Uh, yeah, I got everything. And I also got the, uh, the desk actually scooted into its uh, kind of long-term uh, position here. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure if it's 100% um, even from end to end, but it's pushed all the, way against, um, all the way against the wall there. I'm considering that it's final resting place. I'm not gonna get too persnickety about exactly where it's at. I just wanted it against the wall, uh, which opens up a little bit more floor space here uh, where the desk was, you know, given the drum sets in here, taking up a big old elephant-sized footprint. So yeah, I wanna do some drum tracking today. Uh, the thing is, so I have kind of like a, the final frontier, the, the last thing to take care of and that is to get the last of my acoustic treatment hung up. You know, you can see I got the corner traps and the, uh, the first reflection panels. And you can see I got a mirror over here. <laughs> I went and stole the, uh, the full-length mirror out of our uh, uh, hallway. And I was just basically kind of doing the, the mirror trick. Um, since, you know, with these wall-hanging panels, the, the obstacles in the room kind of dictated where I hung those. Um, fortunately, as I can see, and actually here, let's see if we can do this too. Let me get you into my listening position, approximately. Although I am much, much shorter than that when I sit down. So here, let's get the legs down. All right, that's closer. It's still a little tall, but uh, this is, you know, where, where you're at right now, that's pretty much my listening position. So I went and I measured the distance from, wait, where, there he goes, uh, from uh, this speaker to this speaker. I'm, I'm considering that interior set of speakers as kind of my primary speakers. Those are the Atom A7X. Um, the Yamahas are set out wider, um, but they're so wide, I'm not gonna kind of dictate my listening position or placement of treatment based on those. I'll just know, I need to scoot back a little. So the, uh, the kind of guiding principle is, you want an equilateral triangle between, where are my fingers, there they are, between your left and right speaker uh, you know, whatever that distance is, and it's about 40 inches uh, in, in my situation. So I want it to be about 40 inches from each of these speakers to my listening position, to my ears. And, you know, it's pretty close. I'm, I'm, I'm a couple inches uh, too far away, uh, but honestly, I, I'm okay with that. 
Like I said, I'm not gonna get too persnickety and scientific about it. You can drive yourself nuts trying to uh, obsess about the little things. I'm trying not to. It's in my nature to do that, so I'm trying not to. All right, so from your listening position, typically you would have a friend grab like a hand mirror or something and start moving along the wall until you see a reflection of a speaker uh, in the mirror. And you can see over here, right, yeah, about right there, from my listening position, I catch the uh, left speaker <laughs> Uh, in, in the mirror here. The kind of curvature of everything I have, um, I'm not exactly sure if you can, if you can see, um, but due to the curvature, you can kind, you can like just see one of my right speakers, um, and it's kind of facing away from that point, so, uh, whatever. I, you know, I can see uh, the left speakers in there, so I think, actually, and you can kind of see where I ended up hanging that panel, and hey, that was a pretty good guess. Um, you know, that was kind of the only spot where I could hang that panel, and it's actually gonna catch some first reflections. But now with the ceiling cloud, and I think, yeah, if we look up, you're just gonna see a big blurry beige thing. Okay, whatever. Um, so for the ceiling cloud, there's no there's no obstructions up, uh, up there. Back up, back off, get on my face. Uh, th there's no obstructions up there, so I, I'm much more free to place them where the reflections are truly going to be caught. Now, it just so happens I lucked out <laughs> and right where the, uh, the, the other panels are, are actually going to catch those reflections. So I'm just going to uh, line up. So I have two clouds. They're both uh, two foot by four foot uh, by two inches thick, four inches thick. And uh, I, in the past, have had those... Uh, just hung right next to each other, just right above my listening position. Uh, I think since I'm going to be tracking drums in this room and guitars and other loud stuff, this room is so lively. It's, um, you know, concrete floor. Um, at least one of the walls, two of the walls, are, are concrete with drywall over them. The ceiling, the other two walls are just our drywall. The kind of minimal uh, treatment that I've got up so far, you know, it, it's definitely helping. Uh, I think I, I was doing some uh, listening off this mic as, as a sound check before recording, and it's with, with the compression that I have uh, on my voice here, like it still sounds pretty lively, uh, pretty roomy in here. I do have a bit of a noise gate or a um, uh, expander going on, so hopefully it's cutting down a little bit. Hopefully it's not chopping off my voice. That's always a fine line with the uh, expander and gate. Uh, and you know, I have the two gobos, the two acoustic screens right now. I've just got them uh, expanded and sitting next to each other uh, to kind of deaden that wall, hopefully in an attempt to kind of uh, tame the <laughs> reflections a little bit. You know, there's nothing over on this wall. And just given the amount of stuff and the windows there, and I don't have curtains yet and all that stuff, um, that's just gonna be lively for right now. So I tell you what, uh, I'm gonna set up a time lapse real quick. Let's get these acoustic screens up and um, get this out of the way. I've been dreading this for so long, but let's do it. Let's get it over with. That was about as awful as I was afraid it was gonna be. Oh man, there is nothing fun about this process. Maybe someday they'll find a uh, nice easy way to hang a ceiling cloud. So that one's up, it's, um, it, you know, it's centered in the room, uh, it's square and everything. It leans a little bit one way, but I, I just don't have much control. Uh, you know, the, the um, screw that screws in on this side, you know, the desk is here. So I would highly recommend you hang your clouds um, when your desk is moved out of position. But that desk is a little fragile, and uh, uh, I'm a one-man show here, so getting it into place was bad enough. I'm not about to move it again anytime soon, so whatever. So I ended up just kind of coating everything with dust here. Uh, let me sweep this up, and then we'll get started on uh, the other one. Yay.
All right, well, that thing is up. Uh, no small feat. <laughs> it is up. That one was actually a little bit easier because uh, I could actually reach both sides of it. I could get around to both sides and, and uh, get those toggle bolts, you know, tightened all the way. On the other one, I ran into a stud. Uh, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, one of the ceiling joists. So I had to use a, uh, you know, a wood screw instead of a toggle bolt. And uh, man, apparently I didn't drill deep or wide enough of a um, pilot hole for it. And uh, it was it was just tough. So that one is half secured. Uh, it's, you know, it seems stable enough. It's fine. Uh, that one's nice and stable. All right, well, I got a little bit of uh, cleaning up to do here real quick. Done. That was not fun. But yeah, you know, uh, if uh, you know, it's kind of overexposed, but you can kind of see up there. Got that fella for over uh, kind of in the guitar and drum area. I uh, got the kit set back, back up. And then this guy had a first reflection point in my mix area over here. So, you know, you got to make some kind of uh, compromises when you're using a, a kind of a multi purpose room. It's not just a tracking room, you know, a live room, and it's not just a uh, mixing room. Um, so, you know, it, it is a small room though. So uh, no matter what, too lively is just not gonna be uh, ideal. So I think, um, I think it actually sounds okay in here. Uh, I do still have some compression on my uh, lav mic here. So I'll be curious to uh, hear how this sounds in post. If there's any difference, it's probably still pretty roomy, uh, you know, all in all. But hopefully when I'm recording drums, uh, that'll cut down off some of the ceiling reflections instead of just having a hard ceiling overhead. And uh, as I'm mixing, hopefully the uh, added absorption, broadband absorption above me will uh, help kind of uh, flatten things out a little bit. I did actually notice a difference when I scooted the desk, uh, you know, all the way against the wall. I had been noticing before I scooted it um, that even to the atoms, like I could hear, that it, I, I'm not exactly sure if it was like, uh, you know, it was higher than 80 hertz, maybe 120, maybe up to 200 hertz, somewhere in there. It was just kind of, everything sounded boomy through it. Um, I do notice an improvement, but also it's been a few weeks of listening every day and I've probably gotten used to it anyways, so um, I probably can't be too objective. I, I should do some measurements now, and maybe I'll do that in the next episode here, do some uh, Room EQ Wizard um, measurements just to kind of see what it looks like. Uh, and other than that, it's just going to be a matter of spending more time in here to see what it sounds like. All right, I think that's gonna do it for me this time. Uh, hey, what are you guys doing in your home studios lately? Um, you know, any improvements, anything fun going on? Hopefully, you're at least making music in your home studio. Uh, let me know in the comments below. All right, that'll do it for me this time, and I'll see you guys next time.